everyone. Welcome back to Sydney and Starlet. And if you are new here, welcome. Welcome. Enjoy the videos. Videos. So today, me and Sydney are going to be reading Walt Disney, the Tigger movie. So let's begin. It was a Tiggerific autumn day in the hundred acre wood. Hoo 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 hoo! Tigger happily called, balancing through the freshly fallen leaves. It's a wonderful, it's wonderful to be the one and only me. In fact, Tigger felt so wonderful that he decided to share his bounciness with his good friend Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. How'd you do, Pooh? Tigger greeted him. You want to go bouncing with me? Well, I would, Pooh answered, except that I must count my honey pots for winter. Yeech, Tigger replied, accidentally stepping in one. I'll never understand why you poos like this icky stuff. Well, anyway, TTFN, ta ta for now. So Tigger bounced over to Piglet's house. Hiya, Piglet, old pal, Tigger called. Well, you say you and I do a little bouncing, but Piglet was too busy collecting firewood for winter. Tigger saw Kanga next, but Kanga also had too much work to do to go bouncing. What Tigger didn't realize was that Roo would have loved to go bouncing with him, but by the time Roo came running out of the house, Tigger had gone. Tigger sat down on a large rock, why would anyone not want to bounce, he wondered. Tigger was sure someone would want to bounce with him, so he bounced off the rock and back into the forest. He didn't notice the rock had come loose. It rolled down the hill and landed, crash, right on top of Eeyore's house. Eeyore was okay, but his house wasn't. It was stuck under the rock. It wasn't long before everyone but Tigger came around to help. Tigger still didn't know what had happened. Rabbits came up with a plan to move the rock. Everyone helped him construct a funny looking device. No one really knew how it worked, but Rabbit was sure it would. They pushed and pulled, but the rock didn't budge. Hello, you blo bl blokes, <laughs> called Tigger springing into the group. Anyone up for a little bouncing? We have no time for such nonsense, Rabbit cried. There's work to do. What, moving that old thing? Tigger asked, examining the rock. Not a problem. All you need is a little bouncing. You think bouncing will move this boulder? Said Rabbit. Haha, <laughs> it's almost amusing. Here, I'll show ya, Tigger answered. He wound himself like a giant spring and boing, unleashed his biggest bounce ever. The rock went flying. Unfortunately, so did Eeyore and all his friends. Around and around, they tumbled and stumbled until finally, slap, they landed in the mud. Now that that's out of the way, Tigger said to his muddy buddies, who's up for a little fun type bouncing? Look, just look at this mess, Rabbit shouted angrily. Everything's ruined and all you can think about is bouncing? Well, yeah, Tigger innocently answered. That's what Tiggers do best. But we're not Tiggers, Pooh reminded him gently. You mean no one wants to bounce with me? Tigger asked sadly. He walked off into the forest all alone. Who needs them anyway, Tigger exclaimed. I'll just bounce by myself with nobody else. But Tigger, Roo protested, joining him. Aren't there other Tiggers? I have a mama. Don't you have a family somewhere too? A family? Tigger had never thought of such a thing before. It was a thrilling idea. A family full of Tiggers, you say, he asked excitedly, bouncing up and down. But Tigger didn't know where to find his family. So he and Roo went to ask Owl. While Owl rambled on about family trees, 
Tigger accidentally knocked some pictures off the wall. Roo tried to help his friend by coughing loudly to distract Owl, while Tigger tried to put up the pictures back in place. Then suddenly, while looking at the wall, Tigger had an idea. He would search for his own family tree, a tree that would be gigantical, striped, and full of Tiggers. Can you say Tiggers? Tiggers. Tiggers. And so, with Roo's help. Tigger searched the hundred-acre wood for a tree filled with tiggers. He searched high. He searched low. He searched near. He searched far. Yoo-hoo! Tigger called family. Hello. For hour after weary hour, the two looked around, but found nothing. The other residents of the Hundred Acre Wood were busy too. They were still helping one another prepare for winter. But Pooh, Piglet, and Eeyore found out that Tigger was looking for his family. They decided to help him instead. So off they went on their own quest for Tiggers. Meanwhile, Tigger and Roo had almost given up. They tried to the tired twosome, shrugged back to Tigger's house. Where aren't those tiggers anyway? Tigger said with a sigh. We've looked every which and where, and not to mention right over there, and not a single strutty tree in sight. And just think, Tigger continued, if there were other tiggers, we could all bounce the whoop de doop der loop de looper alley ooper bounce. Could you teach it to me? Begged Roo. Begged Roo. I'm a real good bouncer, please. That's ridiculous," Tigger answered. "No offense, Roo boy, but I think you're a little on the smaller side of the tiny. Oh my God! And just think," Tigger continued, "if there were other Tiggers, we could all bounce the whoop de doop de loop de looper alley ooper bounce. Could you teach it to me?" begged Roo. "I'm a real good bouncer." Please, that's ridiculous," Tigger answered. "No offense, Roo boy, but I think you're a little on the smaller side of tiny for that." Roo tried to bounce anyway, but crashed. Things fell all around him. Tigger noticed a heart-shaped locket and picked it up. He eagerly looked inside the locket to see if there was a family picture, but the locket was empty. Completely tiggerless," sighed Roo. "How am I? Oh, <laughs> completely tiggerous," sighed Tigger. "How am I supposed to find my family now?" Then Tigger had a great idea. He would send his family a letter and invite them to his house. Roo eagerly helped his pal. When they had finished, they sent off Tigger's letter. Then they sat down to wait for a reply. Meanwhile, Pooh, Piglet, and Eeyore weren't having much luck looking for Tigger's family. Eeyore found some bouncy animals, but they weren't the right sort of tigers. Oh, tiggers! <laughs> Pooh found some strutty animals in a tree. They reminded him of honeybees. It turned out they were honeybees, angry honeybees. All the while, Tigger and Roo waited for an answer to Tigger's letter. Soon. The first snow of winter began to fall. Roo became worried about his downhearted pal, so one night he talked to his mother Kanga. The next morning, Kanga and Roo gathered to gathered the gang together to write a pretend letter from Tigger's family. Dear Tigger, I'll begin writing. Now, what else shall it, shall it say? How about dress warmly? Kanga suggested. Yes, Pooh agreed, and eat well. Stay safe and sound, advised Piglet. Keep smiling, Eeyore added. We are always there for you, Roo said, wishing you all the best. Owl concluded. Signed, your family. That night, they secretly placed the letter letter in Tigger's mailbox. <laughs> Tigger gleefully shouted the next day. Look what I've got. A letter from my very own family. 
Everyone smiled. Tigger was happy. Their plan was working. And the bestest part of all is that they're coming to see me tomorrow, Tigger added. Everyone stopped smiling. They never wrote that. Um, where exactly does it say that? asked Owl. With Tiggers, you have to read between the lines, Tigger explained. Tigger was so excited that his friends didn't have the heart to tell him the truth. Luckily, Roo came up with another plan. They would all dress up like Tiggers and pretend to be Tigger's family. The next day, the pretend Tiggers knocked on his door. Surprise! they shouted when Tigger opened the door. Tigger gonna, couldn't believe his eyes. Come on in, he eagerly invited. There's lots of catching up and we gotta do. Hey, who's up for some family type fun and games, Tigger offered. I know, let's do what Tiggers do best, bouncing. Let's do the whoop de doop de loop de looper alley ooper bounce, cried Roo. But when Roo tried the bounce, not only did he crash again, but his mask also fell off. Tigger saw that his family of Tiggers were really his hundred acre wood friends. His feelings were hurt. We only wanted to help, explained Pooh. That's all right, replied Tigger, sniffling. Somewhere out there is my family, and I'm gonna find them. So TTFE, ta-ta forever. Tigger left the house and entered the cold forest all alone. The next morning, a terrible blizzard hit the Hundred Acre Wood. Without Tigger, winter seemed much colder and much more unfriendly. Pooh, pleaded Roo, entering the bears' house. We've got to find Tigger. It's dangerous out there. So Pooh gently suggested that he, Piglet, Eeyore, Rabbits, and Roo form an expedition to find their missing friend. An expedition. However you say that. Meanwhile, Tigger tramped through the deep snow, still searching for his family tree. Suddenly, he saw the biggest, tallest, grandest tree ever. I found it, he shouted, bouncing up the branches. Hello, anybody home? He bounced from branch to branch looking for Tiggers, but he didn't find a single one. At the time, Roo, Pooh, Piglet, Rabbit, and Eeyore bravely fought the freezing weather as they searched for Tigger. Tigger! Tigger! They called through the howling wind. Where are you? But Tigger didn't hear them. He sat on a lone branch and moaned. The big tree was empty. There was no family of Tiggers. Maybe they forgot I was coming, he said. Just then, Tigger spotted something far below him. It was his friends. Hey, he cried as soon as he had bounced down from the tree. What are you guys doing here? Suddenly, there came a loud, low rumbling sound. It was an avalanche. Snow roared down the mountainside. Come on, hurry up, Tigger shouted, bouncing his friends up the tree to safety. No time for dwell, dwelling. Just when it seems that everyone was safe, Tigger was swept away in the swirling snow. I'll save you, Tigger, Roo cried. There was only one way to save Tigger. Roo wound himself up and unleashed the mightiest whoop de doop de loop de looper alley ooper bounce ever. He grabbed Tigger and pulled him to safety. Woohoo! You did it, Roo! Tigger cheered. You bounced just as good as any Tigger could. Later, when everyone was safely home, Tigger held a party for his pals. Ahem and a whom, he proclaimed. On this most occasional occasion, my first is ever family reuniting, I'd like to present each one of you a present. Tigger gave Eeyore a new house, Pooh some honey, Piglet firewood, and for rabbits he promised always to watch where he was bouncing. Last but not least, Tigger gave Roo the, the heart-shaped locket, and inside the locket, Tigger put a picture of his very own family.
The family tigger had discovered he had all along. The is the end. So that is it for today, everyone. We really hope you all enjoyed it, and we will see you all next time. Wait, wait, wait. Bye, bye. Pick out your favorite page. That's a very good page. Well, it's an interesting page. <laughs> All right. Who's your favorite character? What? The rabbit? Okay. Bye-bye.